Hey guys, it's been already a couple hours. Like I'm trying like to uh, lubricate, assemble this mechanism so it works properly. I'm replacing the belt and I'm tuning the position so it will work properly and turn off the switch. So there's a couple things. So see, it's a two position switch. It can go from back and forth and these two uh, like uh, arms uh, have to uh, switch this position so next time it will turn in the opposite direction the motor all right <coughs> uh, then like uh, here this gear is fully tied with the main gear so there is no any slippage and if i will go fully inside position it's currently switch it and it's the far right position as uh, this uh, door arm can go so there is a like support in the plastic which don't always go far further back so let me pull it out I will show you so you may see so it cannot go behind this position so that's the farther one even if the uh, gear itself can right so this is the far down position and when it goes in it gets here and then rotates like that right so technically so there is no room for error right so now let me assemble and let me show you what's going on next uh, if i will rotate in opposite direction you may see that it's now will go forward by rotating the gear and when it gets to the point when the arm will sit on this uh, post it will start rotation versus pushing see it's coming close okay and now we will start in rotation which will make the door closed mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit of work to do it manually. I think I understood what the problem is. So here we get to the point when the door is fully closed. But we cannot complete operation because this lever would not push the switch. It's still far from the switch. I, as I understood, there should be some friction mechanism and those, this larger and those lower gear uh, should be tied with the spring, but over time they get connected, so I need to check this mechanism. I'm already relaxed the screw, so and it's not rotating the shaft to the other side, so I probably need to see how to unstuck those two gears because it just been sitting so many years now doesn't work because this top gear should be rotated on friction uh, to uh, switch off this position switch to our external side okay all right let me see because that's the only case i cannot imagine anything else see you soon well this part, this uh, it's a one one gear with two two levels. And here, the gear is on the assembly diagram, as you may see. So that's the one piece. I still cannot understand if it's already out, like uh, already pushing too much. Okay. But it's still far from the switch. How to adjust? <laughs> well, spent yesterday 
few hours today and another hour. Any ideas? Welcome. Uh, here, guys, so I'm waiting and thinking what to do with the mechanism. I decided to replace this battery because it's leaked. And original battery is Varta 2.4 volts, 60 milliampere. All right, so I'm checking schematic and it shows like uh, this battery connected to 5 volt line. So technically, if I will install 3 volts battery, it will work just fine. So that's where I'm installed. Not sure about milliampere's. <laughs> I would need to check if 3 volts will work or I need to find a replacement battery for that. All right. Still puzzled, still don't understand how to assemble it properly or what's been done before me that it doesn't work as designed. See you. Well, I check it schematic more and uh, this is not better. This is a nickel metal hydrate accumulator and that's where I decided to remove the lithium uh, uh, how is this? Not cage, but, but. and uh, order it another one. Uh, this one for 60 milliampere hours. I ordered it for 150. That's the only one that's available today. And they're available on Amazon. One costs $15. So let's see when it comes. Right? Because if, to, if I, I can use battery, but I would need to um, pull up this resistor, add a diode, and then I can use lithium battery. And this will work for a couple of years. Uh, this accumulator is can work like 10 years. Uh, right, luckily it didn't destroy my board. At least like uh, from both sides, I check it, there is no significant damage. So, We'll see on this side. We have just a burnout, but all traces are intact, so I don't see problems. Should be good. All right, Jason. All right, everyone. Finally, door installed and tuned, but it takes forever. <laughs> so see what's happening. So when door fully goes back. It cannot go anymore, but you see those spring, there is a, how to say, friction mechanism, which allows to gear slip, okay? And we can continue moving to turn off the switch. Now, when we go to the opposite direction, it will go, it will close the door like that and see what's going on so this those chair so finally the door is fully closed there is no more room but there is a still space you see as uh, this uh, lever should move switch back so due to friction it will continue going and finally you hear the click done that's how it works uh friction is is tough i believe it just was stuck due to uh, it was not working for so many years all right now i assemble now i have to connect these connectors put the screen back and we can test how everything works wow long journey long to understand and with uh, here we have a screw inside uh, which we may adjust like position between top gear lower gear and make sure that uh, uh, they will work in sync and door will close properly uh, with proper angle whoa big piece is done hi season okay everyone the puzzle with the door is solved so clicking done now clicking back 
fully closed. Perfect. Oh, moving on. See you soon. Here, guys, I'm continuing and trying to get to this switch. Something just dropped. Let me give me a second. Okay, the piece that just dropped was this small, tiny spring, which sits on this shaft and pushes the button back just from the below. Quite, see, quite, quite loose design, really. It's even not symmetrical. So we need to get to this small button and get it working. So I need to disassemble it and clean it up. Also, you see one wire got broken while I was working on it. So this button needs to be redone because it works poorly. Also, I probably would need to pull up this indicator board because something wrong with it. So it lights well, but uh, signal it's uh, from time to time it drops I, and it don't display anything. Well, way too many issues is this small little deck. See, I'm just guys looking into this mess. So here is the buttons, right? And LEDs, LEDs here, buttons here. And that's how everything is connected. Wow. It's very different uh, manufacturing culture. You see all those wires go, and I was able to pull this wire here. I fixed it already. So this wire is connected. Now I will be desoldering and disassembling this button right here. So let's see how it will perform. See soon. So here is the button internals. So these two pins, even if they look like golden, I will be deoxidizing this is what is pushes them oops it's right here this is a small teeny piece okay looks like that and the top cover plastic button piece okay see you and uh, here guys i reassembled the button and now it's works from every time okay ready to put it back hey guys and i found another sophisticated solution so as you may see on the back of this board, we see a large ease installed right there in the middle. Right? But what is more interesting, if you see down there, capacitors are installed in between the indicator and the board. So if I will decide to replace them, I have to fully disolder this indicator with all these legs and then I would be able to replace them and then I have to put it back so wow worry not not like a uh, service for the solutions I understand that at this time they can just replace the deck or like full board but today it's not possible why right. see you Okay, I assembled this piece and now see tape source works easily. No more problems. Good. Now let me show you what I mean about display. So you see it disappears. Now it works, but from time to time it just disappears. Now see it's blinking. I'm not quite sure what's going on, how to address it. Yeah, and some something here is blinking. I need to check more what's going on. See. Okay, so the problem was on this board. So this board here 
is the indicator board. So I bent some parts and it started to work in all modes. So pick one. This is the mode for view meter. So technically it's Dolby plus three and plus five or plus six and then plus eight. So Dolby, I mean if it's so it's plus three and plus five levels here. And we can clearly see it here. So Dolby is plus three and four. It's it's zero on Sony deck. So it would be two, four, six decibel above. Oh, you see it's again behaves sporadically. Something is like needs to be resoldered on this board. All right, now it's worse again. I need to resolder capacitors probably, transistors. So, and now just levels, you see? So it's something with levels, really. This board is, is crazy. Okay, the good that the uh, indicator chip works, so I just would need to work on this, with this board to have it fix it. Now, as you may see, we can quickly switch source tape. No problem at all. See you soon. Okay, guys, I'm continuing research. And uh, when I pull out the board, started to play with it. Uh, indicator started to work even more sporadically. And like sometimes it shows full levels. And I started to check. So there is connector for power supply. Uh, one side, so middle is the ground. One side is plus seven volts. Other side should be plus 24 volts. And it shows nothing. Ah, it's probably above. Yeah, here, 23 volts, okay. So we have power. Uh, so I will continue looking what's happening with signal pass because like uh, I bent boards a couple times and I, I, I've got like levels. You see it's rising, then rising to minus 10, then to zero, then make it full scale. I'm not sure what's going on really. Here, see, I'm touching the amplifier. I'm bending the boards a little bit. Let me see. One of the parts here don't perform well. See you soon. Okay, suddenly it works well, but I'm not sure of these levels here. So levels proper works fine. Let's see, maybe it heats up or like, and then capacitors start to shoot or whenever it's happening. Like about yesterday, it was acting sporadically. It's finally, I get full scale lead. Okay, let's see. Let's see soon. Well, guys, after deck got heated, you see, indicator starts to behave by itself. So we're not playing, but it started to increase levels one by one. And if I will switch a couple times, you see. It doesn't change anything. Oh. I, I believe it will be a long research. <laughs> See you soon. Okay, I have a good news and bad news. Good news that the problem comes from this board, not from the display chip. You see there is a small offset above zero. And if I will use my finger, I can like see that it doesn't return to zero. And that's the levels. What I'm doing, I can touch it with my finger. You may see the levels correspondingly increase, decrease, but it's not returns to zeros. So the problem is that from this amplifier, we have an offset coming over time. And as it's coming over time, I believe this capacitors needs to be replaced because otherwise it would be like shooting right away. 
All right, so let me recap this board. Let's see what will happen. See you soon. You know what? Actually, I removed the glue on top from this connector, but I didn't see that there is a glue on the bottom in these two places. So let me clean it up, remove this glue. Maybe it will start work. See you in a moment. Well, guys, and I was correct. It was someone poor's attempt to recover the deck. So you see this pin is not connected, so it's not holds well. And I like under glue, I was not able to see it. Others are more or less fine. And here I remove it glue and the two traces are off for this connector. So let me restore it carefully. So you see two traces are broken here. And they're like, we're not connecting properly. So let me clean it, restore it. And I hope it will start working finally. See you soon. All right, guys, that's the result. I'm using uh, cut legs from the capacitors I've been like, using before. So I bend them around because those pads are just fall out. So I bend them around the pins of this connector. So it would hold steady and then use uh, this long extension uh, to solder to the traces. And here we go with this connector. So this is communication uh, to the microchip in the indicator. And this one I didn't check yet, but it goes like somewhere to the amplifier. So maybe this is all connected. Let me connect it back and let's see how it will perform. Well, guys, good news, it still works. <laughs> yeah, bad news, we still have some levels. All right, so probably capacitors needs to be replaced. So I hope that this was a root cause of the issues. Apparently it is not. So you see there is still level and it's like not goes away. Okay. Uh. Okay, guys, recapped. So, all new cups except these two. I never saw that these are possible. Those 0 0.47 microfarad, but they are bipolar. I never had the <laughs> same one. So, I decided to keep them for now. Working so far. Next zone. Stop. Uh-huh, there was no level, it's again growing slowly, you see, I'm so tired, so with this board, yeah, that's how it should be, so no levels, but somehow it's somewhere, okay, so now I, I touch it, so nothing happens, only like when I touched the signals you see all right at least now i can bend it and nothing happens so we fix it all major issues now i need to see how to fix the minor issues let's get them work for longer so peak one peak two peak two will will hold peak one doesn't hold just show peaks okay and I have read about this decomp, it's dynamic compensation, so it will show more level, I believe, or adjust levels for more level dynamically for a particular tape when it will perform. Okay, let me run it for longer and see if anything else I can do. I hope it should normalize because there is nothing to replace anymore. All transistors work, logic work, amplifiers work, capacitors replaced, board restored. So, not sure what else. Let me see. Uh, it's still possible to do, it's not very complex schematic, it's just these three op amps uh, which integrate the signal with those Schottky diodes and regular diodes, so it works like integrator and shows average levels. 
Okay, so and there's the switches for different modes of operation. Source tape, here pick two, pick one, VU. VU will switch this trigger, pick one, pick two will switch this trigger, and it will affect with these transistors. I believe the output signals here, indicator pick two, Decom pick one VU. Uh, it will just show on indicator. Uh, and here, where is this goes? Ah, here. You see from this transistor, it goes up here, and this will change integrator log logic. Here on this microchip, pin three, see it's connected, and we change in this. Uh, 0.47 microfarad capacitor right here. We add in one more with this, and uh, with this transistor, we add in an additional resistor to the ground. Right. So this one gets uh -huh, here from this trigger. So it's VU or not VU, changes the level with this resistor, and well, good. Now let's stop. You see, it's growing. All right, I need to see what's the root cause of this growth. Really, I cannot understand why it's happening. See you soon. Well, guys, uh, I check it voltages on the inputs and outputs of this uh, display driver microchip. So we have proper 2.21 here. 8.1 on both inputs, but on the outputs, voltage is slowly, slowly, and we have proper 16 volts on the power supply, but output is slowly growing. So I believe this chip is done. I found those on eBay, so I will have to order and replace it. And I, I thought if like the indicator chip may affect, so I disconnected connector and the voltages are still like there and still growing. 48 millivolts and it slowly grows. It was 40s and it goes higher, higher, higher. You see, it's adding and adding and adding. And finally, after it uh, works for an hour, it will f f lit up all, all indicator. Well, luckily those are still available. So it will take longer than a soul to restore this deck, but I hope it will worth it. See you. Guys, here I'm continuing, so while I will be waiting for the microchip, I decided to fix these buttons. They've been like, uh, they should be go soft and easy. And it looks like they've been like stuck in a position where they've been like clicking, they've like shifted. I'm not sure. So it looks like we have all pins in place. I'm not sure why, why they get out of position. So also I found that uh, on one of the button, this uh, light conducting element was uh, fall out, so I'm just glued it with uh, super glue, waiting while it's drawing. As soon as it will be ready, I continue assembly, and I hope that they will stop. Specifically from outside, they've been like uh, every time uh, hard to click. They were like really. Like, like, like they stuck, like with a loud click, they have been like starting to work from inside. Everything was fine. Let me see. So, pretty easy construction. So, the buttons just hold into these medium positions. That's it. So, should work like that soft and easy. Okay, after carefully assembling the front panel, now the buttons work. So you may see, easy, without any special clicks. Quite easy. I had to center them adjust because they were off center. They were sitting too low. And like that was the root cause why it was working so poorly. Now you see door retracted 
and we can do the same from here. Rewind, stop, fast forward, stop, playback. Everything works. All right. So when I turn off, there is like proper levels, and over time, when microchip is heating, it gets wrong levels. So that's where I have to order it. Okay. This piece is done. Moving on, it's so many problems in one deck. I never expected, but number of parts is, is above the roof. Okay, see you. Okay, everyone, I was able to tune up frequency response on playback, and now it plays super cool. Really, I'm so happy with the sound. I, I pretty much enjoy it when I listen in source. I moved upstairs and I decided that I will restore this deck 100%. And now I, when I listen into it, when I adjust the frequency response, I found the port, so, and it's played super, super cool. Um, so it's flat up to, I believe, 12 kilohertz and up to 15 kilohertz. It shows a little bit slower, like minus two decibel. But uh, all in all, it still sounds really, really cool. So we'll see. We'll see how it will come up. So far, you see indicator works. I can works in all modes. The only thing that uh, it don't fully settles to the low values. All right, so it's much better than it was before, before like yesterday it was like going up to 15 16 like it was lit fully after some time now now it's much better maybe it just like needs a time to this chip but i'm already ordered it. new chip we'll see how it will come up at least like indicator is super bright i'm very happy how it's look and it's like comparing even to gx9 it looks like a more, for me, like more professional, like more better, better view, better look, All right? So I very much like this pike peak mode when it's, it shows uh, peaks of the signal and in VU it's like needle indicator, it shows like average values. So that's where like, uh, when we go to zero here, technically it can show like it's already, eight or even 10 decibel on the peaks. So that's how it's averages. All right. So this would be it for this part. I still have to wait for parts. I ordered the uh, deck for parts from Japan. So to fix the tape transport issue, which I caused it myself. I ordered a newer deck. So probably the H7 will be better, we'll see. But this heads, I check it the wear with microscope. There is no wear. They're pretty good. All right. Um, so I will replace this. I will receive microchip, replace microchip, and then continue assembly and tuning. I like to make sure that this will sound for its former glory. Really, I so much like the sound. Now there is no crackles on the pots anymore. Uh, tape source switch works very to fine. Door closes, opens pretty well. You see, no issues. Buttons work now easily. This very, very easy touch. Everything works. This button opens. Everything works. Moving forward. So next part with this deck may come up with uh, like maybe a week or two weeks when I will receive the parts. So see you guys and bye-bye.